Hi everyone, it's Judy. Welcome back to the On Track Podcast. Today I have a panel of um, industry, electronics, and realization experts on the podcast who will be presenting in a panel format at Altium Live. This happens to also be the open source ventilator team with an engineer, manufacturer, and assembly. And I think you're going to really enjoy the takeaways and learnings that they're going to tee up for you in this podcast and also in more detail at Altium Live. Just so you know, Altium Live registration is now open. It's completely free of charge and is taught in English, but can be accessed anywhere. So I encourage you to sign up now. I'll throw the link in the show notes below. So lean in, enjoy. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to Altium's On Track Podcast, where we talk to leaders about PCB design, tackling subjects ranging from schematic capture all the way to the manufacturing floor. I'm your host, Judy Warner. Please listen in every week and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and all your favorite podcast apps. And be sure to check out the show notes at altium.com forward slash podcast, where you can find great resources and multiple ways to connect with us on social media. Well, hi, Dugan, Rob, Chris, why don't you take a quick minute to introduce yourselves and thanks again for joining me today. Hey, Judy, thanks for having us on uh, on your podcast today. We're excited to kind of tell you about our experience with working on the OSV project and also um, share some of our learnings with shifting everything remote. Maybe we can help other people out too. Thanks, Dugan. How about you, Rob? Yeah, I'm uh, also very grateful to be here and uh, super glad to have this opportunity. Uh, my name is Rob Cook with Calumet Electronics, uh, and I helped out with the actual PCB fabrication on this project. Chris? Yeah, th thanks, Judy. This is uh, very exciting to be a part of this and uh, really excited to talk about all that we learned through this once in a lifetime, once in a multi-generational experience, really. Well, you know, Rob and Dugan, you've both joined me. Chris, you and I haven't had the opportunity yet to do that one-on-one, -on -one, but you've both joined me in the podcast, and um, it was so much fun to sort of go on your journey and be part of your journey along the way. Uh, for our listeners, um, if you haven't seen it before, I'll share it in the show notes, but uh, Dugan, why don't you just tee off um, we do have a video about the open source ventilator. Didn't complete my thought there. So Dugan, talk a little bit about your involvement in OSV and how Rob and Chris sort of became your co-pilots through this process. Yeah, absolutely. So OSV, um, open source ventilator, is unlike any project I've ever been on in my life and hopefully is unlike any other project um, well, hopefully there's never a need for that kind of project again, but it was, it was a bit of a wild ride and it's a, it's a great example of what happens when engineering projects go viral. And I don't think that that happens very often, but the way, the way that all started is right around March or early to mid March is when it really, um, when the coronavirus really started hitting and making impacts in the U S especially in Michigan. Um, and I think, like a lot of people, I was just looking for something to do and some way to not feel helpless as we're seeing on the news, all the, um, all the ventilator shortages, all the other um, medical emergencies that are happening because of this. And the way I got started, honestly, is I just, I went on LinkedIn and it was probably a bit annoying and just like tagged every single company I thought that might be able to help. And my company is still pretty new at the time. Um, we're only a couple years old. Um, and I don't have a I don't have a ton of resources, but I certainly have something something to offer. And so I just kind of put out there that anything that we could do, I'd volunteer up any of the resources that we had, and kind of kept pulling at that thread, and eventually wound up connecting with this team that started in Ireland, and they were making an open source ventilator and had some very specific needs at that time. And I was like, yeah, no, absolutely, I can help with this. And I joined that project thinking I was going to design just a circuit board or maybe even a circuit for someone else's board. And it turned into um, the largest global team I've ever been a part of. So yeah, um, we'll talk more about that too. And uh, I'll give Chris and Rob a chance to kind of talk about how they got roped into. Chris, why don't you talk about how early on uh, Dugan had called me 
and ask for some um, for us to sponsor a handful of all team designer licenses that were hosted in the cloud on all team 365 and you and I and Dugan and Chris Baird from DigiKey got on a call. Tell, tell our listeners a little bit about how that call went. Yeah. So we've, uh, you know, we've had a good relationship with, with Altium for, for many years and, and um, uh, developing our software platform to support Altium. So I reached out to you guys asking if there was anything that we could do to be a part of it. And um, they, the, some other folks there quickly connected me with you, Judy, and, and uh, you were, you were moments away from having a phone call with Dugan and asked if I could join. I just so happened to be talking to uh, one of our customers who happened to be DigiKey and said, Hey, do you guys, is there any way you can support this project? And they jumped in and, um, it was, uh, it was a really cool experience because we were able to, um, you know, w w it was a zoom call. So we were able to see each other, which was, it was a nice sort of intimacy that started to happen through this pandemic. Uh, most of the time our, our remote connections have been over telephone, but for some reason during the pandemic, everybody decided we wanted to see each other. I think it was like a social starvation, but it was, <laughs> it was a wonderful opportunity. And because we were using, um, the video conferencing software like this, we were able to share our screen and we got to see that uh, um, some of the engineers had already been working on projects that could support this and having motor control boards and different sorts of sensors. And they pulled it right up in Altium and got to show us what they had done so far. And it was really inspirational and, and motivating. It was, it was a, it was an awesome, like it was 30 minutes. I'll never forget for the rest of my life. I'm with you too. It, it just to be on the call, I felt like a little bit of a coordinator or fly on the wall, but that was the funnest call ever. Before we move on to Rob, Dugan, talk about your sort of perceptions with that early call with DigiKey, um, with uh, Chris Denny, you and myself, and, and what your um, impression was of that call. Yeah. Um... I've said this before and I'll say it again, OSV kind of spoiled me as an engineer and as a business owner, because on that project, none of the regular rules apply. You're able to cut through and like get contact with executives, get parts like sent all over. Everyone just like, yeah, this isn't normal times. Let's just make this thing happen. And the pace of it was just astounding. Like, I think what happened was um, we had described to the DigiKey engineering team kind of what we were looking for. And they're like, oh yeah, no, we actually made something really similar for one of our internal projects. And it had like a stepper motor and an LCD and a user interface. And we were designing the ventilator to be as easy to produce and as simple as it possibly could be um, while still serving all the functions that it needed. And the fact that they already had that ready was just astounding. And then they volunteered the design. And then we took that design, I think they had done it in like LTM 17 and imported it into 365. And now that one design that was probably sitting on one dude's computer at DigiKey was now available to our entire engineering team in the course of like 30 minutes. And the entire engineering team is not like five people in a room in, in Michigan where we are. It's like 20 engineers spread across the globe who are working around the clock on this. And that was really, that call really highlighted the magic of that project and really showed what people, um, really people rising to the occasion and meeting the immediate needs that we had for this project. So yeah, it was like, like Chris said, it was absolutely magical. I'll never forget that. I won't either. And does anybody else feel like the universe, like all the stars aligned and we all ended up on this call. I mean, just that DigiKey is like, yeah, we have one of those. And then they pull it up in all team designer you have you had 365, Chris Denny had called, and then Dugan, you'd called me and we were talking about um, getting lined up with a fabricator, which is, of course, my background. And I was like, Michigan, Michigan, oh, you need to talk to Rob. So Rob, tell us how you got involved early on with the OSV project and how you got involved in, uh, with Dugan. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Dugan and I actually met last year at Altium 365, which was kind of a neat coincidence because- You mean at Altium Live. We're throwing a lot of Altium words around here today, but I think you mean the conference. Um, yeah. And uh, 
we had a uh, opportunity, Judy said, they're working on the manufacture of this open source ventilator project. Um, do you guys at Calumet Electronics have anything that you could offer and help out with? And, you know, this was right around the time when every ventilator manufacturer in the country was also asking us to produce their boards. Um, but this was a way for us to actually contribute ourselves. And so uh, we got on the phone and we started kind of making a couple of connections. Dugan gave me a brief overview of what they were looking at, uh, the five different boards, and then, you know, suggested that we talk with Chris and really get a, a good look at the designs. And that was my first real opportunity to try Altium 365 in a actual real project environment. And uh, I, I think that's kind of one of the things that we're really looking forward to talking about at the panel is everything that we experienced with that process and how it was such a huge impact. Uh, I think at the conference last year, uh, one of the speakers from Sierra Circuit said, you know, how many designs go on hold is a common question that he gets. And his answer was all of them. And with rare exception, I can almost agree 100% with him that there's always questions. Design packages are a communication tool. Communication isn't always perfect. Um, and what we found, like Dugan said before, you know, we've, we cut all the red tape and all the normal rules and threw them out the window and just collaborated right through the early design stages into the final re design reviews and had stuff that was gonna hit the ground running immediately. Uh, just to kind of give a little preview, we got all of the, the tooling and all of the files through uh, my team in a day and a half for five separate boards and out on the manufacturing floor. Um, for, for five boards, that's pretty rare. Even though we can handle quite a bit of volume, um, it usually is a board comes in, it gets on hold, takes two or three days to get questions answered. Uh, we get a little bit further, find out there's something else that was problematic. Uh, and then all said and done, it's a week before it's actually on a manufacturing floor. And we did it in a day for most of the boards and a day and a half total for all five. As you both know, the majority of the years I've been in the electronics industry, if you can picture it here, uh, you know, is that I was a technical sales rep between the Dugans of the world to the Robs of the world, and also between the Dugans of the world and the Chris Denny's of the world. And so I have all the scars to prove it. Where all that disconnect, my job was to bridge that gap and make sure all the the communication and the data was understood on both sides. And so I was sort of in that role, which is why I'm so passionate about it. And um, for our listeners, it's like, we cannot help but talk about all Team 365. But I think the theme here is what would it do to your lead times, your cost, your reliability, if we could eliminate these barriers if somebody like a, a Judy or a Rob didn't need to be the gatekeeper and you could do digital collaborative engineering. And I think one of the, you know, as tragic as this health crisis has been, it sort of opened up the space and the need, right, for us to do this. So um, now I want to talk about a second call. Um, which Rob sort of alluded to, uh, you three got on a call. So uh, Dugan, why don't you tee up that call? And then I'd like to hear from all three of you from your perspectives, you know, different aspects of that call and how it affected your workflow. Yeah. So once we, um, well, once we had figured out that we were all going to work together and that this was the team that was going to make these boards happen, um, well, we of course finished on working on the design and um, working with Nadim. Nadim really led up the, the technical engineering side for all of this. Again, I thought I was gonna design a circuit board. I didn't design a single circuit. I just kind of played coordinator for all these different companies and individuals um, really across the globe. 
And um, so now it came time to, to share the design that we wanted to build. And I still feel like using LTN 365 is like engineering with cheat codes because we all got to see the context of the design. We got to see exactly what needed to happen. We all knew like everything that, um, everything that had to be built. It was just time to talk through the details and make any tweaks or changes. And like all the, like all the problems that wind up being like a day or two delays in a project, we like hammered out with like a 30 second bit of conversation. And um, I'd been beta testing Altium 365 for about the last year. So I'd kind of just become used to using the tool, but this was their first experience in kind of seeing it and getting that insight at the front end instead of dealing with, dealing with and you can still like change the design very easily instead of correcting a problem later on is, is just a much better way to get, get boards made. So um, yeah, I'll hand it over to Chris. So it, it's, it's funny you talk about how you, you cut out like two days worth of delays just by being able to have this 30 second conversation. And right before um, I jumped on this call, I'm, you know, writing a response to a customer trying to ask them about all these questions that we have because things that, you know, there's vias and pads and what do you want us to do about this? And how do you want us to handle that? So I've got to open, you know, I got to take screenshots and I got to put up, to put together a report and I got to type out all this information. I got to explain all these details of why this is a problem. Whereas when you can just be working in software like 365 or doing screen sharing or something and you're on, you're, you know, you're on a call with them, you can just say here, right here, th see this problem here. We, we can't have this, you, you know, you got to eliminate that. You got to move this, get a nudge that, and you can solve these things and you can have the data package cleaned up and back to you just as in just as much time as it takes the engineer to do the physical work instead of the email delays and, and writing up the reports and, you know, getting a, you know, there's a whole sign off on, did you get approval on this and who, who confirmed that and get the signatures and you just, you eliminate just an unbelievable number of delays in that process. I mean, I specifically remember a overhanging USB connector that Chris saw right away was My going to be a potential problem area. And because that information on that overhang is not usually apparent to the PCB fabricator, you know, we didn't, would not have known to leave an extra route clearance specifically for that overhanging connector. And just things like, you know, fiducials and, and trade-offs and options to be able to have the conversation to say, oh, can we make the pallet rail a little bit thinner? Then I can fit more parts up on a production panel and really improve yields and give you more boards to start with. Um, you know, we made all those trade-off discussions. Uh, and, you know, again, I don't want to give away everything from the, for the panel discussion, but uh, like Chris said, having the ability to work through that stuff ahead of time before it even hit us. Uh, and Dugan even made some design changes based on some of the things we were talking about and during the, the call up. right like in real time correct yep i think there was a couple things he had to uh confirm with nadine but uh for the most part yeah they were real-time changes uh dugan were you finished was the design complete at the time that you shared it with rob and chris at that point it was um complete as far as we needed it to be and we we're ready for their feedback and then yeah like I'll have to go back and look at the, the revision notes and see exactly what we changed. Um, but yeah, it was, that was the board that we were intending to produce. And then, um, yeah, it, it was really nice being able to go through and review all of that before. And also like, I just want to comment on the, the crazy thing. Like once we got Altium 365 set up and like everyone was plugged into it, I, I like, went on and tried to like coordinate other manufacturers and volunteers and, and all this stuff. And then I come back a few days later and there's all these designs that are just like populating in our server here. And like, we're ready to share those out. And it's, it's, it was like a field of dreams kind of thing. You know, if you build it, they will, they will engineer it or something like that. I don't know. We'll have to work on what that catchphrase is, <laughs> but it, it, it was a wild experience just watching like designs populate on our server. And it's like, that it's really, really neat. It's just really, really neat. Well, to take a look at the context of Altium Live and what attendees can expect 
to sort of take away, as you mentioned, you've all mentioned, it was a once in a lifetime thing, but I think there's some takeaways, right, that will persist. And I think there's some valuable learning here, which is why I've asked y'all to join for Altium Live. So what do you think the implications to this process is from design to product build? What are the implications that um, you'll be sharing, you know, from a very high level as it, as it applies to cost, time, schedule, time to market, reliability, like just give us a, like I said, a real high level sense of the implications and what all team live attendees this year um, can expect to sort of take away and apply to their day-to-day work. So, so I'd, I'd just kind of like to speak to that real quickly. I, I sort of, um, you know, we, we've had a workflow at our company for many years. And then when we started to adopt software like, uh, you know, the G Suite software from Google, it really like fundamentally changed how we build things. Like we, we went from, I remember the president of our company used to walk out on the floor and he would, he'd walk up to a whiteboard and he'd, he'd erase it all. And then he'd write down all the jobs by hand, everything we had to build for the week. And that was our schedule, you know? And then, and then when we switched to using software and things like, uh, you know, G Suite and Google Sheets, and now we can, we can just digitally update these things constantly and keep track of what's going on. It, I mean, it completely changed how it is that we work. And it was difficult to sort of foresee how, how, like, I don't think nine years ago, I could have seen the way that we work today, even, even though the software existed. And I sort of feel like that about tools like 365. It's like, you can see some big wins. You can see some early wins like we're talking about here, but I think people will continue to discover more applications for them. And it's going to change. It's, it's going to fundamentally change the way that products get designed and built. I'll How jump about, in too. Okay, great. Uh, Mike Cadillac is our uh, vice president of business development. And he says the biggest thing that we can do to impact our industry is velocity. And, as a guy who designed boards and then sent them out to be fabricated and assembled and built, that sitting around waiting for the board to come back so I could start testing it and making sure it worked was like the most horrible waiting time ever. And what this whole thing did was just improve the velocity of that and took down that waiting time and got things back in Dugan's hands. So as he could, as he put it, uh, yeah, we found our, our, our other issues. They None of them with the manufacturing, but, uh, you know, that was within a week of him getting the boards back. Yeah, it's, uh, yep. The, the first round of hardware, I wish it didn't always have problems, but I always expected to have some problems, and none of it was related to manufacturer assembly, just pure design stuff. Um, and, yeah, Judy, to your point, I think that the – at least one of my biggest takeaways from all this is geography is starting to matter less and less, especially when it comes towards collaboration. And there are some things that are just always better to do face to face, but there's a lot of things that we can do better digitally. Um, Like travel time between meetings is just not a thing when you're all meeting online. I I remember like in the before COVID days, BC, like if you had three meetings in a day, you'd have to budget travel time everywhere. And uh, you don't have to do that with Zoom. You can talk with someone in California, talk to someone in Italy 10 minutes later. It's, it's, it, it's just absolutely wonderful. And having, having all of that connectedness and all of that collaboration available is, um, it's also like Chris said, the software has been around for a while, but this experience we've all gone through, I guess it's kind of forced us to normalize it. And now that it's, it feels like the new normal, it's going to be really interesting to see um, how that changes, especially once we can start working face-to-face more. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that evolves in our society too. Well, again, you guys, thank you so much. Again, I, like you have all said, it's something I will never forget. It was an unexpected um, point in time that we all sort of enjoyed together and 
it was just fun to watch. Again, for me, I have so many bumps and bruises from standing in those gaps for so many years, as you all do, um, that this this unlikely motley crew of us would get together and put all these pieces together, I think has a really hopeful message, I think, for engineering in general. I really like what um, Chris, you, and Rob has said. It's about velocity. Time to market has never been more critical. Things that you're doing, not only at Worthington, Chris, but with Circuit Hub, um, you know, software is really fundamentally, I think, changing the way that we engineer and realize products. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to, to sharing your insights and going a little bit deeper in the panel at All Team Live. And even that I can share you guys virtually because we've had to make it a virtual event means more people can hear this story and learn. So thank you all so much for joining me. Um, Look forward to your panel. Any any final thoughts from any of you before I let you go? Thanks, Judy, for uh, including us on this. And um, like I said, it was a super big pleasure to work with Chris and Dugan in this whole thing. Thank you for having us on on the podcast today. My pleasure. And and finally, um, the one year I get a free ticket to Altium Live, it's free. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm excited. I'm excited oh, to well. talk about the whole project. Maybe next year, Chris. <laughs> so uh, to our listeners, thanks so much for joining this conversation. Thank you again to our panelists. We look forward to sharing them with you. And we will also um, be sharing the open source ventilator a film that we shot, a little mini documentary at the event. And then these fine gentlemen will share takeaways and implications and just give you a glimpse of the way things actually could be, you know, if we took full advantage of software tools and um, just to learn to work better as we're all working remote. So thanks again for joining us. Please remember to go over and sign up for All Team Live. The registration is climbing fast and we're very excited to scale the event because some of those boundaries have been eliminated. So it's free. We have an unbelievable program lined up for you, including this great OSB uh, collaborative team. So make sure you check out the show notes. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember to always stay on track. Thank you.